I think this is fabulous, man. Yeah. Tom, good. we're beginning to think, you have a thing for Memphis, Tennessee. Castaway. Yeah, yeah. A few years back, and now Elvis. Tell us about this other side, perhaps, of mm. Colonel Tom Parker. Well, he knew, El he knew Elvis, and he knew Memphis pretty well, uh, didn't he? Colonel Tom Parker was a carny, pure and simple. Now, you can look at a carny as a sleazy guy who overpays for soft-serve ice cream and chili dogs and magic tricks, or you can look at a carny as someone who understands that these magic lights on the edge of town attract people who want to have a good time. And they know the, they know the contract they have with the carny. We're gonna give you 50 cents, and we're gonna have a magic, magic night. The, the, the truth is, is that I think the colonel was actually giving them a dime's worth of entertainment and charging them 50 cents, but that works out. I mean, even, even they knew about it. He was a genius and he understood that Elvis was such a one of a kind artist that comes along once every century, certainly when it comes down to, you know, popular culture. Uh, so much so that here's something, here's something the colonel never ever said. Son, if you sign with me, I'll do for you what I did for Elvis Presley. Colonel Tom Parker had one client. He represented one artist all his life after he signed Elvis Presley, and that was Elvis Presley. And you have to, you have to bow down to some aspect of business uh, acumen and smarts and toughness that the Colonel had. Now, did uh, did Elvis suffer from the fact that he had a promoter as opposed to an artistic manager? I think so, uh, without a doubt. But. You can go, you, if you take Elvis from 1955, when he's on, when he's on the Dewey Phillips radio show at, at midnight, telling everybody he went to Hume's High. Now, I understand you went to Hume's High. Is that right? Tell me, do you, do you are your friends at Hume's High appreciate your singing? Um, from that moment to the 1968 comeback special and then even beyond that to that first and second year in Las Vegas, uh, I don't think I don't I don't think you can fault the the colonel for not representing a one of a kind artist for those for those 12 years um, in a way that didn't live up to the true promise of Elvis Presley. Now, should he have played Vegas for five years? Well, maybe not. Maybe he you know maybe he should have branched out a little bit. And if if man had been honest about not having a passport, he never was a colonel. His name wasn't Tom, and he wasn't even a Parker. So. Maybe if he had lived a little bit differently, something would have gone that way. But I, I have great affection for him. I have almost as much affection as Priscilla and Jerry Schilling have for him. They said he was a lovely man, and they're sorry he's gone. And they're talking about the colonel. So that's unique. What does it mean to be in Memphis today, to, to let the world see this movie? Man, it means the world to me. It really does. We worked so hard on this film. It's been a part of my life now for three years. And so... I was really nervous for people to see it at first, and now that, that Lisa Marie and Priscilla feel the way they do, it's just, it's relieved a lot of that, that uh, intense pressure that I felt. Where now, now I'm able to kind of sit back and enjoy a little bit more. And, uh, I'm just so proud of everything that we did in this movie. What's so interesting is to hear you talk about the amount of research, the whole work that you did to prepare for this, to do it right. Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I really, I didn't do anything else for two years. It was my life, um, and yeah, I, but it, what a joy to get to just spend that time with Elvis, you know? and now, and now getting to be here and, and, and get to spend time in the house today, and it just is so special. Yeah, I mean, there's like, there's, there's like this sort of biological, uh, uh, biographical Bible, which is the Quran, yep. but then. And you can't I was impacted by books like Being Elvis A Lonely Life, yeah. which like him maybe like in the not state. being able to fall asleep alone, so him having Kathy come up and sit by his bedside later on in life and, uh, and then telling her stories about his mom and about his fears of being forgotten after he dies. And those sorts of things. When I read those, I just got chills because you're seeing the man behind the eye. So any moment that I find anything like that, it, uh, there was other things like Anita Wood, in, in, I think it's about 1960, she recorded him accusing him of cheating on and he didn't know he was being recorded. And so you get to hear a moment where he's being backed into a corner and then and, and with a very intimate relationship. So moments like that, those were the things that I found most helpful. Uh, and then obviously it's studying the performances inside and out. But 
Um, but those are the things that are more train spotter moments. And it was all about finding the humanity. Um, yeah, because I'm not, I wasn't a singer. I, I, I really didn't, uh, I, I didn't sing for anybody. And so I was really nervous. Because not only is it singing, but it's, he's, he's got one of the greatest and most iconic voices of all time. So I felt so much pressure. Um, but I just I worked my ass off and just, uh, just really got down to it every day. At home, what has this experience been like, the movie, Elvis, and all? Well, first of all, it feels great being home. The whole family is here, pretty much the whole family. So, uh, and we're here to support this amazing film that Baz Luhrmann has done in his beautiful, stylized uh, way. Um, I was a little nervous at first, not knowing where it's going to go. <laughs> but um, it, we've given our full stamp of approval. Uh, I know throughout the years you and I have talked before how protective you have been about all things Elvis. And I take it you give it your thumbs up and why? Absolutely. Why? Because it's a true story. The story has never been told before between the relationship or the ups and downs relationship of Elvis and the Colonel. Secondly, the way that it is brought forth to the public is, I think, quite unique. It's not your normal film that, you know, we all see. You just take the storyline, you put it out there. It's stylized in a way that's so beautiful. I mean, really, only Baz can do this. I mean, he's not only a producer, but he's a writer as well. So he took a lot of this. It's been a lot of time. And the cast is outrageous. I mean, Austin Butler, I mean, it's, it's, it's taken all of us as a family by surprise. He is perfection on yes. Elvis Presley. So, so good to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice seeing you. My pleasure. Thank you. Jerry Schilling, my good friend, so good to have you back in Memphis. The film, Elvis, what does it mean to you? It means, to me personally, it means my life. It's where I grew up, it's where I met my best friend, it's where I have all my friends now. Um, and I'm so proud of the heritage of Memphis. And this film really pulls it out, the delta, what music did, Sam Phillips, all of these people coming together. Uh, it's nice to know that this history is documented properly. And uh, from Tupelo to Memphis to L.A. to, you know, it's really done with a lot of love, a lot of research. I think Bass had this idea originally 11 years ago. And has been working on it for five years. And, uh, you know, to get to know this cast and crew, to travel to France with them in New York. You can really tell when a project's going to be special when all those people loved each other. And they went through a lot. Place burned up, all the sets and everything in Australia. Then Tom came down two weeks after Priscilla and I had dinner with him with COVID. So a lot's gone on. And as all of those people say, it made the film better. Yeah, they really lived together. And Jerry, you and I have talked so many times. We talked just the other day. And I'm so yes. pleased with just what all you mean to us and the world, you've been protective of Elvis over the years. Is this something you give a thumbs up to? I absolutely do. I had met with Baz originally three years ago in New York. I had dinner with him. Priscilla and I were promoting the HBO's Elvis the Searcher in Tribeca. And a friend of mine said, do you want to have dinner? And I said, well, you know, I'm really tired, but I'm staying tomorrow. Call me. He said, do you mind if I bring Bass? So we met. Uh, I would have to say, and Alex, you know I've worked on a lot of projects. This is the ultimate. Uh, total thumbs up. The cast, the director, Bass, everybody. Uh, it's nice to know that this is going to be a huge part of history. Always, my friend. So good to see you. Thank Glad you. Glad to have you back home.